bet you probably don't watch the sunrise or the sunset that often. Uh, we didn't when we lived on land either. Bad timing. Too busy. Still at work. Apartment block in the way. Well, when you live on a boat, you have to stop what you're doing and watch them all. And it's good for the soul. Currently, we are here, part of the way through the Asawas Island chain. And we are enjoying manta rays, epic anchorages. Um, the fly smacking game, of course. Plucking coconuts from abandoned resorts that didn't make it through COVID. That is completely abandoned. A lot of wasp nests. And we have a long list of sites we want to see. But we are about to pull a classic cruiser U turn. Technically, you can sail a boat in any conditions and in almost any direction. But a cruiser likes to go downwind, or at least have it behind the beam, which is why we are currently going with the Southeast Trade Winds. But a very rare westerly is about to sweep across Fiji. And that has us contemplating an enticing possibility to sail in the opposite direction, from up here to an island group rarely visited, the Lao group. We've read glowing reports about this place, in particular an island called Falunga. And we read it not on tourism websites, but articles and blogs by other sailors, as arriving by boat is the only way to get there. There is no tourist ferry to reach this island, no resorts, no hotels, no supermarkets or tourism. It's Fiji before the rest of the world arrived. Atolls and islands to take your breath away. Coral reefs to make the Great Barrier blush. And so many fish, it's like a drive through McDonald's. So do we abandon all our plans in the Asawas in an instant due to wind change? What's the call, Captain? All right, so we have decided to leave to the Lao group. These windows don't happen very often. It's a subtly kind of uh, a little bit light and fluky for the first 24 hours with a bit of a swell. And then it should turn really nice southwesterly with a glorious spinnaker run down on Sunday. That's the plan anyway. Who knows what it's gonna be when we get out there. So we're just heading towards the pass now. We are sailing upwind at 34 degrees apparent. We've got an 18 metre mono just off our port side that we're keeping abreast with and a uh, smaller guy just off our starboard uh, has just given up and is motoring with his mane now while the catamaran is going upwind in front of him. <laughs> Out of the Navula Passage and into the open ocean, we settle into our routine at sea. The next morning, our wind has dropped and the ocean is gentle, but we know the good times are coming. All right, team. We've been through the hard 24 hours. We've done our grind. Now it's time to enjoy the fruits of our labor. 
You ready for some spinnaker sailing? Oi! Yeah! Put your hands up if you want to go spinnaker sailing. Yay! Alright, that is getting it ready. Time for the setup. Oh, mate. Wind is too far behind, so. I have a spinnaker. Yeah, this isn't dangerous at all. Slippery. Very slippery. Alright, take a look at this for a tangled web. So, starboard tack line, starboard sheet going around the front of the bowsprit and the screecher over the top of the screecher line so we don't get snagged. We've got the main tack which runs off the bowsprit. This is the secondary tack in case I want to pull it across. This is the port side sheet. That's the control line. And this is the halyard on the right side. All right, let's hoist it. Are you ready? Okay, ease yours a little bit. Ease yours a bit. Yeah, ease a bit more. Bit more. And a full main. We do this quite a bit when the spinnaker is up. We put a third reef in the main, even though it's not required. It stops it from blocking the wind to the spinnaker and makes for stress-free sailing. Mm. What you got there? Fresh coconut water. What's going on with my power tools? What? This is a coconut opening device. <laughs> my drill. It's to be used frivolously on fruits and vegetables. Tough life. What are you doing, Sneaky? Playing cubby houses? Yeah, playing cubby houses. Look at that data. Now that is a cruiser's dream. 14 knots off the starboard quarter, slipping along at 7.5 knots. one of the things that uh, we love about catamaran living. The whole family can sit at the table while we're sailing downwind at eight knots. Beautiful.
Laga of Pulanga. Well, all in all, it was a good sail. Two days, one easy motor sailing, and the second day, yesterday, we had a great sail with the spinnaker up most of the day. Uh, took the spinnaker down only at 10 p.m., put the screecher up, and then later in the early hours of the morning, we put the head sail, and that's it, we arrived. Well, nearly. We gotta make it through the pass now. Are you running a track? No. Hmm, make it through the pass indeed. This is how it looks on avionics. And this is how it looks on the satellite image. Remember, there's no help out here. No marine rescue, no tugboat. You wreck your boat here, it stays here. Coming through the pass. Luckily, we've got a sun right behind us. Our timing with the tide is perfect. Sun is behind, the reef is clear. Even the tightest of passages always seem wider when you're there. And just like that, we made it. Our friends on the boat This Way Up have been here for a few weeks already and they met us at the entrance to the lagoon to show us the anchorage. Before long, we had dropped our anchor in a place that has to be seen to be believed. I just want to finish this episode with a massive thanks to everyone that sent in emails for our Crew Wanted episode. We were inundated really and it was, it was really cool. Yeah, we received so many awesome emails from you guys, people that just wanted to join in for the experience. Some of you that are retired couples that have done the same thing uh, with their own kids. Two chefs from Lord Howe Island, I kind of like that, my stomach liked the idea of that. <laughs> and uh, even all we had the best one was Marley, she's 11 year old, she sent us a handwritten note and her dad put that on an email, that was the cutest Yeah, it was one. cute, that was super cute. So, watch this space, stay tuned because at some point someone will join us out here. In Rio. On Rio. Next episode, the island of Falunga. We take you on a tour of what is quite possibly the most beautiful place on earth. Yeah.